In this lesson, we're going to be creating a brand new database as well as a brand new table. So from Access here, I've gone to File and New, and I've clicked on Blank Database. And now you need to name this right now. Unlike other applications where you would name at any time, you would save as, here we have to give it a name first. And if you don't like where it's storing, then you'll have to change the location. But I'm, I'm okay with where it's storing here. So now I give this a name. And then you would go create. So your database has a brand new table. And oddly enough, it's opening in data sheet view, which is typically where you would work on adding names and records Right, adding, sorry, records is what I meant to say. Before I can start adding records, I need to build this. So I would caution you to not type anything here, but instead move over to design view. Now, before you can do that, it's asking you, what are you going to name this table? And before you can type anything in there, you'll have to understand what is it you're going to put in this table. So if you're putting customers or clients or students, you would think this through and you would type what it is you'd want it. So if you wanted students, let's say, you could do that. And then you hit OK. So now it's telling you that your first field, or it's recommending that your first field be an ID field and that it would be auto number. And to be honest, oftentimes that's exactly what you'd want it to be. You would want to identify employees or students with some kind of automatically generated number where no two people can have the same uh, number. And it's also recommending that this be the primary key. Now, not to confuse you earlier, early on, but that simply means that two people cannot have the same number that will be generated. And that's probably a great way to start most tables. So I'm going to leave that exactly the way that it is. And next, I would click here, and now it's just a matter of identifying what do I want in my next field or in my next column what would I like? Now, oftentimes, a person's name is the right thing to put here. However, keep in mind that you don't want the entire name. You don't want the first name and the last name to be one field. You need to and you want to separate last name from first name. And you'd probably want last name first. So here, you can type last name. Caution, do not use spaces in this view. We use databases for a great number of things, and at some point you might want to do some math and you might want to create relationships with your tables, and when you start putting spaces in your field names, it really messes things up. So try to remember, do not put any spaces or characters uh, or, or, or funny symbols in this area at all. As far as a data type here, if I click here, I get a little drop down to choose from. You would want to choose one of these. And last name will typically be text. But just so you, while we're here, take a look at some of your options. Uh, a memo would allow you to type many, many, many characters. Um, I believe 65,500 is how many you could put in a memo field. Whereas in a text field, people would only be able to type 255 characters, which is still quite a bit. A number field would refer to something that you'd want to do math with. Okay, such as um, amount owing, uh, that kind of thing. The date and time, okay, again, it would be the, could be when they signed up, it could be when they quit, uh, last time they paid you, it could be anything, right? So as you're picking your field names, you would then choose what kind of field that you would want it to be. It could be a yes or no field. It could be a hyperlink, such as an email. Okay, You could put email without it being a hyperlink, though, very easily, and that could be a, a smart thing to do. So over here, last name is fine, and text is fine for last name. And of course, I would follow that up with first name. And that would be text as well. And then from there, you might want to go with uh, address. And even though there's a number in address, this is still a text field. Okay, so then 
for address and then we can go city and then I can go province state whatever now this third column here description really helps the people who are doing the data entry uh, there are several ways of helping people who do the data entry, and we're going to get into that in, in one of the next lessons. But for now, because this auto number field is one that's generated automatically, you might want to let people know not to type anything in this field. So I would type something like do not type here. It is generated automatically. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and save this. And because we already gave it a name, right, we call it students, it's fine. Now this is design view. This is where we build what our table is going to look like. When you're ready to actually type in the table, you need to go to data sheet view. Now these, this, is a, it, this button brings you back and forth. And this little picture stands for data sheet view. So if I want to go there, I simply click on it. If you click on view, it'll show you that you can go to data sheet or you can go to design. But the default setting is if I just click it, it'll automatically send me to data sheet. And here my table is ready to be built and I can start entering information. Now down here, I'm getting a message saying do not type here. It is generated automatically. So I would hit tab and then I could type my last name. And then you'll notice as soon as I tabbed over, it automatically gave this person ID number one. So now that's a record and I don't have to save when I'm in this view. I can go back to this view anytime. Anytime I change something here, it will ask if you want to save. So when you're designing your table, you have to save things, but when you're doing data entry, you don't have to save things. If I wanted to add a field now, because these are students, so I could have number of credits. If I wanted to here and I could use number here which would be fine if I try to leave this now and go to data sheet view it's going to ask me do you want to save and you must save and yes I do however when I come here and I want to add more records it's not going to ask me the same question so I can go here for my next student I want the same record again, control apostrophe is a shortcut, and control apostrophe is a shortcut. And here I can type the amount of credits, and I can go up here and give Fred some credits as well. I can also delete. So let's say Fred decided to go to another school, I could delete that record. It's simply making sure that I wanted to delete that, and I can say yes, I do. And now if I want a new record, you'll notice that I'm going to get number three. Number one is gone forever. It can never be used again. Uh, it is a primary key field, and part of the primary key field means that if you've used a record, you can never, ever use it again. It's permanently gone. Okay, It still belongs to Fred Flintstone, even though he's no longer a student at our school. And now if I want to go back to design view or if I want to close this table, you'll notice it's not going to ask me if I want to save. It's gone. It automatically saved. So whatever you do in design view, it will ask you to save. But when, you are, when you're actually typing, 
data or editing records, it won't ask you because it's saving automatically. So this is an introduction to Design View. We're going to go a little bit deeper in the next lesson.